Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be painting this sneaker bank with you, okay? Um, all of you should have picked up your kits at the library, and um, you have the, the sneaker. You have a stopper in the bottom, so it's a plug. You pull that out before you start painting. It's a little difficult. You may want to ask your parents or someone to help you pull it out. And you have your colors, and I don't remember exactly what colors I gave you because I put so many kits together. So you can choose whichever color you like. And I know I gave you red and blue and what other ones, and, and white, I know that, and, and I'm sure some black. Um, I'm, since I have this one done in the red, I'm gonna paint this one in the blue so you can get an idea of how it looks in a different color. Now, I'm gonna start with the white. Um, I think on this, on these, ribbons i'm just going to paint whatever color i do on the sneaker i'm going to paint over them the laces because it's very difficult to just do the white and then go around it with the red but down here i'm going to do the white without putting the red underneath it and the black covers everything so wherever you're going to put black you can just do all white and the black will go on top of it once it's dry so just start by pulling your plug out making sure that you have a covered table and you have the brushes that i gave you um, and uh, your paints okay so um, like I said I'm going to start with the white and I'm going to start with a little smaller bigger brush than you have so that it doesn't take me so long so I'm going to put the white on the bottom and you can also do the bottom in the white I won't waste my time showing you how to do that that's pretty simple so just put the white on the bottom of the sneaker like so I know it's hard to see but and and some people tell me or ask me why do I have to paint it white if the piece is white but there's a difference in the white I don't know if you could see it on the video but there is a difference and you'll see it once you start painting when you paint the white acrylic stain it's a, an acrylic paint when you paint that on the piece the piece kind of looks yellowish and that's because the bisque comes in all different colors I guess depending on the mixture of the clay when they're when they're pouring these molds so you do want to paint it white and it also seals the area for you okay this will seal it and it won't get dirty um, these pieces are washable I wouldn't wash it right away I would let it you know a few weeks they say a few weeks uh, let it go before you would put it under water and also um, you know at the end you can seal it and that will help protect it and I'll go over that again with you when we finish the piece. So I'm going to put the white there. I'm going to put the white across the front area here. Okay. Now put your paints on very smoothly. And I know I repeat myself in all of these videos, but not all of you watch every video. So put them on nice and smooth. If the paint stays very wet looking for a long time, you have your paint on too heavy. And if it's on heavy and you don't pull it out and smooth it out, the ridges are going to stay and then they're going to show and you can't get rid of them without maybe sanding the piece down. So pull it out and look where I put the white, it's already dry, nothing on my hands. Okay, so if you pull it out properly, the paint will dry very fast for you. And you might need two coats of the white, you know, that's up to you. You go back and you look, if you see yellow through it, just do a second coat. And again, I'm gonna put it at the top and that's just the circle in the middle, I kind of left the red going around the edge or whatever color you choose. And you, you can do a couple of different colors. I'm sure you know more about sneakers than I do. There's so many different sneakers out now. We, well, when I was young, I think we just had Ted's and that was it. So let's put this on nice and smooth. And two coats is a good idea with the color, with the white. All right. So... Oh, did I go down? No, that's the red in there. All right. I also mentioned in some of the videos that you can take a picture of this. If you don't want to continuously stay on the video with me, take a picture of it so you can get an idea of um, where I put stars and, and little stitches and stripes and or you do your own thing. You're the artist, as I always say. You're the artist and you do whatever you want. So Swish your brush in water. Don't bang it in the bottom of the bowl. That will make the hair spread open. And dry it. So now, like I said, I'm going to do blue. And I'm going to be doing the blue right over the white laces. I think it'll be easier. This one, I, did, I didn't I did do that. Um, so if you want to take your time, you can. But like you're always going to have an issue with not getting every area covered unless you have a very fine hand. So this one, I'm going to try putting the uh, blue right over the laces. 
I'm starting in the middle when I have a lot of paint in the brush. If I edge with a lot of paint in the brush, it, it might go on to the white. So you start here, and when you have less in the brush, you can edge. Now you can also edge with your smaller brush. So what I'll do is I'll put the blue on with the larger brush, and then I'll go back to the smaller brush to do the edging. And where the black is gonna go, you don't have to worry because the black will cover. That's why I use black last, because I don't like to get it in my brush, get it in the water. It really darkens everything and you know makes everything very dirty. So I start with the lighter color, the white, and then I go to the medium color. See, like over here, I just got it where the black is gonna go, and that's okay, because the black will go over it. And I'm gonna use my smaller brush. Oh, I, you know what I didn't do in the white? And I just realized the circles on either side, you could do those in the white, so I'll stop. I'll take a different brush and I'll do these areas in the white. I think I need a little more white. I fill those pods for you with these big bottles of air acrylic paints. They're water-based acrylics, which you can purchase in Michael's. Um, maybe Hobby Lobby, I, I, I don't know, but I'm sure you can get them many places. I use the uh, large gear pints because they're easy to fill the pods. And when I do my, my uh, other work, my samples and stuff, I use a lot of Mako and Duncan, which I, I really like. So all the paint companies are good. You just have to find what you're comfortable with and what you like working with. And then I think Martha Stewart has acrylics, um, Deco Color, and those are, I believe, you can purchase in Michaels. I was going to say an AC Moore, but AC Moore is gone now. And there are plenty of online companies that sell a lot of things also. Okay, so I stopped and I went back and washed my brush out. Don't ever leave your brush laying with paint in it for any length of time. I left this one because I'm going right back to it. Use your smaller brush to go around those circles. I'm using the big brush, but you'll have a lot more, um, a lot straighter lines if you use the smaller brush. And now this stripe down in the back I just left in the red. You can do it in the white if you wanted to on the back there. But I'm doing the bigger areas with this big brush. And then I'm gonna go back with my smaller brush and do my edging because I'll never get a perfect line using the big brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna put that in the water and swish that around and just lay it across the top of the bowl until I can go and wash it in the sink. So now I'm gonna come over here in the front and very gently try to edge and get a straight line here. So I got a pretty decent line there. All right, now I'll go up at the top, and at the top, I put the red up to here. So I'm doing the blue this time, so I'll go right up to the edge. I like to try to do this with you watching, but it's hard for me to paint backwards. Now if I get the... Um, the blue or the red or whatever color you're using on the white, just let it dry. Don't try to touch up colors if it's wet. Like over here, I went, I got it all over my hands. I went out of the lines on the top. I went on to the white area. I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm not gonna try to do anything with it now because if you put, try to put white over it while it's wet, you're gonna mix the white and the blue together and just get a lighter blue. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that your color is dry before you try to do any touch ups. in my 
palette. Such a pretty color blue. Isn't that pretty? I, I believe I gave you the blue too. And if you wanted, if you have red and white, you could also make a pink. If any of the girls wanted to do something in a pink, you could do that. But just make sure that you mix enough to use. Because it's hard to go back and match once you mixed once. I'm going, I'm doing this top edge by going around. Flatten my brush out and swish it around. Okay, I'm not going to do it perfectly. You can be a little neater than I am. I just want you to get the idea of what I'm doing. And then you can take your time and make yours perfect. This is art, so any way that you do it is fine as long as you're happy with it. You can be as creative as you want. Okay, we got that side pretty much done. Now go back and do this side. It's good that the black line is going to go over on, on here, on this part. Let me see, on this part, so I can either get the blue on there or not. It doesn't have to be that perfect because the black will cover it. So that, that star that I put on there, that's not on there. I kind of winged it and, and drew the star on there, but you can get stickers too. If you have stickers, they can go on there. Or you can draw whatever you want. You can draw a flower. Maybe on this one, I'll put a flower. Since sneakers come in so many different colors and varieties and designs now, you can create your own design on the sneaker. Okay. and And... Like I said, mine is not going to be perfect. I just want you to know how to go about painting the piece. And we'll see if we can cover this, this blue with the white. Okay, but in the meantime, I'm going to go back and see if I can touch up some of the areas where I went out of the lines with the white. See, once it's dry, it covers pretty well. Okay, I got that covered. I'm going to go check out my circles. Usually when I paint a piece, I like to base coat it in one color first because once you put your colors on top of a base coat, it's so much easier to work. When you're doing colors and you're trying to butt colors up against each other like this, the white and the blue, it's a, lot, it's a lot more difficult because you have to be perfect or you see it. When you have a dark color in the crevices, there's a piece that I, I just previous to this did a video on. And this is a dark color put on a piece and then the other colors are put on top of it. And that's so much simpler to do because you don't have to butt your colors perfectly up against each other. But with the sneaker, um, I tried to do it a little differently because I didn't want all those other, you know, one, one base coat underneath it. Okay, so I did that, all right. Um, we'll, we'll try to do the, um, the white on the stitches now. On, I mean, on the stitches, on the laces. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a small brush. Let's see if I can turn this around so you can see it. And pounce the white on top. And by pouncing it, so now if you try to paint it, like say you took the small brush I gave you and you try to paint it, you can do that also. You can paint right on top. If you pounce it, the color goes on a little heavier. Try not to get this all over the place, but you see? Okay, so you can paint it or you can pounce it on. If you pounce your first coat on, I think that'll give you a little bit more coverage 
and let that dry and then go back and paint a coat over it. And the stitches, what you can do with the stitches is do them with a toothpick. And it really goes a lot easier than with the brush. Okay, so now I did one and I started the second one. And that's the only thing about doing the color on top the white on top of the color is it will take a couple of coats to cover, but I still think it's easier and you won't get a lot of white spots showing in between. All right, there we go. I'll just keep going. And the little um, grommets, I guess they're called, that the laces would go into, the circles on the end, end, edges of the laces, I did those in the white also, if you could see here. And then I put a little black dot in between on this side just to show a little depth there. You could you could put the red dot because the red would probably show through, or um, I put the wrong color in the brush. That doesn't help. Okay. I think they're called grommets. This is definitely easier to go over the laces over the base color. I mean, the hardest thing would be to do a second coat, but I think it still gives you a better look. Because you'd always have white spots showing in between your colors. You'd never get your colors butted up against each other perfectly. Now, I'm not being as neat as I could be. I'm just doing this um, so you can follow along as to how I applied the color. And then when it dries, if you find you're out of the lines, you just go back with the blue again or whichever color you used underneath the white and you take a small brush and you do touch-ups. But always make sure that your color is dry. And then we have to do the laces that are hanging down from the top. I almost have it all on there. I'm not gonna do a second coat, but you, you should do a second coat. So you get the idea. Okay, so now we have to do the one coming down. Okay. I'm using the same brush that you have. It works perfectly. So try to do like one side first. Get a nice edge and then go and do the other side of the lace. Okay, and I'll do the other one on this side. Came out of the lines a little bit there. So when it's dry, I can go back and do the touch-ups on that. Now, another thing you can do is you see these black lines? If you have a hard time with a brush, you can use a marker, uh, a fine point Sharpie, an extra fine point Sharpie. You can do that. Uh, so, you know, just um, let do everything else first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop on this. I'm going to do maybe a flower in between so you could get an idea of how to do a little flower. If you look at one of my previous videos, I did some flowers with the back end of a brush, and I showed them how to do that on the believe sign because there were so many little different designs on it. You could use a toothpick or the back end of a brush. So I'm going to use the back end of a brush. I'm going to do them in red. So with the handle of the brush, you make two dots right next to each other, and then one in the middle of those two, like a triangle. 
okay? And then on either side, there's enough space for you to put a dot there and a dot there. And that gives you a spaced flower. And then you can go back in with the blue. Once it's dry, you should let it dry and do a center. Okay, see that? I'll do it again. So two dots, like so. One below it in the middle, so it forms like a, a triangle. And then there's enough space on either side to give you a kind of a nice circle. It makes a, a neat circle. The other way to do it would be to just go one, two, three, four, five, and around, but then it's never evenly spaced when you do that. So one, two, three, <clears throat> and then one on either side. And then let it dry. I'm not letting it dry because I'm trying to show you, and then you could put the flower. And then another thing you can do too is you can take the other colors and each dot that you do, if you don't dip again, gets smaller. So that's with one dip. All right, I'll try to do it so you can see it again. You put your brush down, and then you don't dip again, because each dot gets smaller and smaller and smaller. See that? I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. I get six dots out of it before I'd have to dip again, okay? And look at that pretty little circle that that did. All right, now with the black. Uh, now let's do the stitches first. And I have a toothpick. If you have a toothpick, I'm going to use a toothpick. If you want to use the brush, you can try to use the brush. And I'm going to be doing white stitches. And I'm going to do my stitches. Um, I won't do it all around the top. I'll start on the side so you can see the stitches on the side. And you just take your, whoops, it's hard to hold the toothpick. Take your toothpick. And do one, two. Okay, let me see if I can do this so you can see what I'm doing. Turn it to the side. Okay, even with the toothpick, you have to keep dipping because you'll see that each stitch gets thinner if you don't dip again. Okay, do you see that? The toothpick works wonders. There's so many gadgets that you can use to help you paint. I remember one time I went to a class and our teacher had us go out into the woods behind his house and pick up leaves and use those leaves as guides to paint autumn leaves. It was so beautiful. Okay, so there's the stitches. And you do as many stitches as you want going all the way around the piece. All right, you see the little pretty flowers and the stitches, and I love the blue. So you can do whatever color you want. And then you can use the marker, which I believe you could do the rest of your stitches on your own. You don't really need to watch me do stitches. Um, but the black, I'd like uh, to go over it a little bit with you. You can use the marker, which I think would save a lot of heartache because the black can really make a mess if you don't do it properly. All right. So I'm going to try to do it with the brush. And when I do it with the brush, I put a drop, a dot of water in my brush, and I, I twirl my paint to a, my brush to a point. See, I want, I want a nice little point on my brush. Just a dot of water thins it out a little bit. And then, always brace your hand. Okay, that wasn't enough paint. I think you'll, you'll have a, a much easier time doing this with the marker. And if you make a mess, just let it dry and go back and touch up. Okay, I just started to do that. It's a little more difficult with the brush. And it doesn't have to be black. If you feel that you'll mess it up with the black, do it in another color. Or don't do it at all. There's nothing saying that, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> There's nothing saying that you have to do the black. You could bring your color right up to the white and leave it like that and just put stitches along the edge. All right, 
So even here, where it's a very, very fine line of black that I have on the bottom, I'm going to do that with the toothpick. And let's see if I can do that with the toothpick so that you get the idea of how to do that. Okay. So you still get a line with the toothpick, but you get stitches instead of solid. See what I'm doing on the side there? And then you don't have to worry about having a perfectly straight line with the brush, which is a little more difficult to do. So look how the toothpick did it. Okay. So I think that's a great idea. Just keep dipping almost every stitch dip so that you get a thick line. Just watch you don't put your hands in everything like I just did. I just put my hand in the black. And that's because I'm not letting it dry. You have the time to, to pause this video and come back to it. Okay. So there we go. Now, um, I did do a black dot in the grommet on the one side because the one side, the lace goes in but the other side, it comes out. So um, instead of doing the black dot, I, I think I would do the red dot or the blue dot. I think I would do the dot in the color of your sneaker because I believe the sneaker is what's showing through it. So it would be on this side. So you just can go with the toothpick again. And do that dot in the color of your sneaker. Okay, you see what I did there? All right, I did it in black on that one. So, you know, uh, like I said, art is in the eye of the beholder and it's whatever you want to do with it. I love my little flowers. And um, there's also a, a strip in the front of this sneaker, like a little strip here. You could do that in the black too if you want, or you could do it in another color. And um, or finish it however you want, okay? Finish it in whatever way you want. So I, I think that I've gone over pretty much everything with you. The stitches also on the, um, on the uh, around here, if you wanted, I'll do it on the other side. It's just so hard because everything is wet here. You wanna do the stitches, I'm doing them in the blue, but you could do them in whatever color and just go around in the circle if you don't wanna do the flowers. And also, I believe if you wanted to make the star, it's the same thing you do one dot and then two dots. I'm trying to figure out how to do the star. <laughs> how did I do the star? One dot, two dots. And one across. Okay. Something like that do a star okay and put the little stitches going around there but just make sure you do a second coat on the the white laces because they're too washed out that way and a second coat would really make a big difference just do a second coat on this one so you can see okay now look at that bottom one how much nicer it is with the second coat but just make sure that you let it dry before you try to do a second coat okay and now that I put my fingers in everything and I have it all smeared, don't do that, okay? <laughs> Just make sure you give it some drying time. In the video, it's hard to wait and pause and go back to it. So um, give it drying time. Don't smear it with your hands. And if you do, don't panic. Everything is fixable. You just let it dry and you go back over it again. Don't try to cover one color with another color if it's not dry. Or like I said, you'll mush the two colors together and get a third color in between there. So um, go for it, do whatever you want on it, do whatever designs you want to do on there. Whatever color stitches and sneaker, it's up to you. Put your stopper back in and fill it with a lot of money so um, you can save and, and get something you'd really like. So thank you all so much for taking my class and for enjoying ceramics and have a very healthy and happy holiday season and happy new year to everyone. Thank you.